People who work in human resources. What is the weirdest crap you have seen? Worked in HR for a couple years now, mostly for large firms managing facilities within properties. One of the strangest cases was brought about because a client asked us to review CCTV footage as he driven past the office late at night and noticed the motion sensor lights inside going on and off and was concerned there had been a break in. Turned out our night security officer whose primary role is to monitor cameras from the control room was skipping up and down the corridors cause he felt too full of energy and had to get it out of his system somehow. Watching the footage of him skipping featuring the occasional star jump through vacant corridors for 20 minutes at 1am really made my day. Got a call from our office in India that staff who supported the night shift were running a brothel from the office. They didn't know they couldn't do that. Still fired. They tried to appeal the decision. Did not work. Worked for a large trucking company. Every employee would get a present on their birthday in the mail. And their names on the video board. This week's birthdays are. A guy called to ask if his name could not be on the board. Reason. His twin brother murdered his parents and he did not want to be reminded of his birthday. But I no longer work in HR or at this company, but it's my favorite story from my time there. Our benefits team made the decision to eliminate reserved parking as lots of employees were frustrated when they walked past dozens of empty spots in the reserved lots every day. This new policy applied to all of the company's locations. Of course, the benefits manager received hundreds of complaints in the first few days from people insisting they needed an exception for their own personal spot. The best reason by far was from one person who needed a spot close to the door because they were terrified of bobcats. No other context. We didn't have bobcats near the corporate office so at first we thought they meant construction equipment. Turns out there actually were sightings of bobcats like the animal, near this person's location. Last I heard they were told to arrive earlier to get a closer spot and didn't get an exception. Caught a site manager with like 50 plus pairs of panties hidden all over his office in Ziploc bags, a multitude of adult toys, and over 100k in cash stuffed in ceiling tiles. Took a while to unravel all of that. One of the dumbest things, an employee that worked night audit at a hotel parked his car at the entrance and would occasionally go out there to drink a bottle of vodka in full view of the cameras. He didn't even sit in his car to drink, just grabbed the bottle out of the car each time and drank in the open. Seriously, he could have put it in a water bottle and drank at the desk and would have not been caught as soon as he was, if at all. I'm not in HR but my sister-in-law used to be one for a large Canadian tech firm. An executive at the company got very drunk at a conference in Vegas and the company got a call from the hotel saying they'd have to pay for outside contractors. He had rubbed his poop all over the walls of his hotel room and the hotel cleaning staff refused to deal with it. My dad works in HR. He just told me about a day when they had to lay off about half of the company. It was crazy and there were a whole lot of moving parts that day. Unfortunately, in all the craziness, no one remembered to tell this one new hire that sadly the position he was hired for was no longer affordable. So he came into the office only to see everyone clearing out their desks and leaving. And then, he got laid off. An hour into his first day, he said the guy understood, but it was the most horrible he ever felt for someone in his life. My old company just went through a huge layoff, 60%, and one of the people laid off had just started a week prior, relocated from multiple states over, and has a newborn. Not HR but have been on teams to interview and have input on possible hires. One standard question. What would you do if you were having problems with a co-worker? Answers can include, I would try and work it out or I would take it to a manager etc. His answer, I'd take him out back and beat the crap out of him. He was surprised when he didn't get the job. Everyone has had a co-worker who really needed some sense knocked into him her. There was a mid-level supervisor at a state agency I never got along with. Guy was nasty, argumentative, real piece of work but still had a decent amount of people loyal to him. I come in one day and he's not there. Everyone was distraught. Turns out law enforcement had come after the guy caught him red-handed trafficking child pornography. Rather than arrest him immediately, they gave him the option to return home, settle his affairs, maybe call his lawyer. 
he took the opportunity to simply hang himself in his own garage instead. The next couple of weeks was just damage control among the staff when the details came out. Horrible situation all around. Call center employee calls HR to complain about their supervisor. He's abusive. He won't even let me leave my desk. Supervisor calls HR to complain about employee. Can you please tell that she's allowed to leave her desk? Oh my god. She's crapping in her trash can. It may sound humorous, but there was significant mental issues at the heart of this. Imagine if it was a metal wire trash can. I had to see a video of a guy who crap himself during work while running to the restroom because his manager wouldn't let him leave a meeting early. The guy had IBD and the manager knew this. So the video show him running down the hall and literally a few feet from the restrooms. He starts crapping himself and you see it coming down his leg pant. He looked to be in pain cause he kinda collapsed, and then got back up. People were baffled when they saw this live lol manager equals fired, so definitely the weirdest crap I've ever seen, literally. I learned from an early age not to listen when someone acts like you need their permission to go crap. I once had a temp job in HR, I was scanning lots of old personnel files, and the one perk of the job was reading old complaints against people. The best one I came across was a mediation caused by one member of staff accusing another of witchcraft. She turned me into a newt. An employee, from a different country and culture, never showered. He said that Hui'i comes from, they shower about once a month. His co-workers complained of the smell, which was gaggingly offensive. His supervisor eventually sent him home and told him he couldn't come back until he showered. It was a union business and the guy filed a grievance with the union steward. They came into my office, which has a camera because it was where we had all major disciplinary meetings. The moment they walked into my office, I almost gagged from the smell. It was suffocating. I had two chairs in front of my desk and I asked them to take a seat while I went and pulled his file. When I left, I pulled the door closed behind me. I went to my boss's office. Told him the situation and asked him to pull up the camera in my office. It was hilarious. The union steward was holding his shirt over his nose and telling the guy goddamn dude. You're killing me. You've got to take a shower. After letting them marinate in the stench for about 10 minutes, I went back in and the union steward retracted his grievance and agreed to send the guy home. I was the supervisor who had to go and talk to a new guy about this issue once. He was a young guy who was the kid of a couple of AP journalists and they traveled a lot, but he had spent the past 5 years in a third world country that had similar views on hygiene. He was mortified, promised to do better, and ended up a fantastic employee and eventually my best friend for years afterwards. I got a call from a woman I'd never spoken to, asking when she could start. She'd received a job offer after interviewing with a manager for a customer service position. She told me, but no one ever contacted her about a start date or pre-employment processes like a background check, and it had been a month. After a lengthy investigation, it came out that this manager had fabricated a job opening and offered it to this woman in an attempt to impress her. She quit her job, but, it should be noted, did not respond to the manager's romantic overtures. With the expectation of joining my company, she got a settlement, with an NDA, and the guy who hired her got fired. There was also a guy who faked his son's death for some extra PTO. The maintenance guy had been living up above the ceiling of the building. He had built a little cubby living area with electricity and a small fridge and everything. For years. I used to work at a staffing agency that placed people at manufacturing positions. Everyone had to be drug tested at the office as part of the orientation. If the pickup came back as inconclusive, we'd send the potential hire to a medical lab. They would take another drug test and the lab could determine if the person was on a prescription or using illegal drugs, and therefore, not eligible for hire. So one guy failed his drug test at the lab. He came back to the office claiming that it wasn't his fault. He explained that he, he was riding in a car and he stuck his head off the, the window. Then, when the car passed under a bridge, someone threw a bunch of sea off the bridge. It hit him in the face, and he accidentally inhaled it. I work for a software development consulting company where we go onto client sites and help them develop custom software. One dude, super nice, seven-ish years of experience, goes onto his first client with the company and all is good for about three weeks. 
until the following happened and increased escalation every couple of days. 1. I don't think the manager likes me. 2. The manager is bad mouthing me to others. 3. The manager isn't copying me in meetings, so I don't know they're happening and miss them. 4. The manager is taking away my completed tasks from the board, so I don't look like I am being productive. 5. The manager is logging onto my computer remotely and reading my personal emails. 6. The manager is changing my consulting company, not client, time cards, which the manager has absolutely no access to. Essentially it turned out that he had mental health challenges and thought the manager was sabotaging his every move on the client site. T paranoia just kept going. Unfortunately he got kind of belligerent at the end. I hope he got the help he needed, but it was super uncomfortable. How do you tell someone that their perception isn't reality? The family of the guy who passed away came to speak to us. It was in a factory environment. To get pension docs etc. We sent them away with a to-do list. One hour later reception pinged us saying Mr. X's family was here. Strange. The documents take a few days to get. Nope. New family. Yup. The guy had two different families. Who were about to have a fun surprise. Well. Because both of them were nominated beneficiaries of his will. We had to call both of them in. Had to highlight the nominations. Then the main squeeze found out about side hustle and it was crazy. Wife took side hustle to court for fraud. She lost. I was a recruiter, and you would be shocked to see what some people actually have as their personal email. Most people have come around to using just their name, but then every once in a while you'll have to verify that Brangletter69 is in fact how they would like to be contacted. I am a teacher. There are a lot of angry parents who are still using their hotmail from high school like Studman6969 and SuperZychik16. OBV fake. Makes it hard to take them serious. An IT guy who worked the overnight shift, because he was doing support for our Asia Europe regions, got written up for improper use of company systems. He had dozens of not hundreds of Google image searches related to foot fetish stuff, like insert celebrity here feet along with other random stuff like Q toes, etc. Like dude, you're in IT, you know this stuff is tracked and that your boss could easily monitor it. One of my relatives worked in tech support for a really high profile company in Silicon Valley during the height of the dot com boom. Some guy who desperately wanted to work there was emailing his resume to HR 1000 times every day. Several times a day, the number of emails would get too overwhelming. So the people in HR would just select all the emails in the inbox and delete all of them. Whether the emails were from the applicant or not, my relative had to show them how to filter emails from the applicant. Guy came into the interview in sweatpants and a hoodie, and said he didn't need the job because of how much money he was making illegally, but he wanted to have a job so the IRS didn't get suspicious. Weirdest part is I don't live in America, I very much doubt the IRS cares about Canadian tax returns. One of the candidates I was interviewing via Skype, one, answered the phone while in his boxes and a tank top then stood up to grab his blazer that was probably about 3 feet away. I had to see him in his stretched out boxes. 2. Had a PC site up and open during a shared screen trial. To see how well he can use the digital classroom. I had to remind him I can see his screen he goes oh yeah sorry next instead of just closing it from the corner of his partially hidden window he clicks open the window in full view then closes it. That was nice. ETA. No. Guys he didn't get the job also I got an award for this. Thank you. Random citizen. Digital classroom. Don't tell me he was interviewing for a teaching position. Was working in HR at a call center in the early 2000s. Got a visit from the IT guys one day letting me know that a guy in quality control had been visiting P sites on his work computer. They gave me the report and I set up a meeting with him. So John. You've been visiting adult websites on the job. Well, you know how we do a lot of research. And, sometimes you just accidentally land one. It happens. John, you visited one particular site 27 times. Um, should I grab my things? Yup. After visiting P sites, it is only appropriate to grab one's things. 
not HR but IT. We had a guy start and immediately start using his work computer to watch P. Now this immediately caused some alarms to go off in IT. So because it was my job to keep an eye on stuff like this I decided to do this guy a solid because it was his first day and physically go to his office and tell him he couldn't do that at work. Guy gets all kinds of P off at me and storms off to HR to lodge a complaint against me for trying to tell him how to do his job. Dude gets fired because he stormed into HR and told them how the IT guy was trying to tell him that he couldn't watch P in the privacy of his office. The new receptionist was coming in every morning and opening up programs documents to make it look like they were busy. And they'd sit with one hand on their mouse and one hand on their keyboard and stare blankly at their screen for 8 hours a day and not do anything. They'd also consistently pick up the phone and hang it up without saying anything so that it would stop ringing. I sat in on their termination, and the employees started screaming at the manager about how they were doing an amazing job, and I had to give them another chance. I was 100% confident that they were just trying to get some easy money and wouldn't be surprised that they were finally getting fired. The whole thing was just bizarre. Not exactly weird but, I work in HR and we have two people with the exact same name but in different departments. This still causes confusion sometimes but the most awkward was last year at the Christmas party. We have this annual employee of the year award and the name was announced before mentioning the department or other info. Although I warned the MC not to do that, as we had two people with the same name. Let's just say the wrong one got the most excited until he realized it wasn't him. That's so unfortunate. While back, at a very sales focused company, can't go into too many details. The story got passed around the industry for a while and I'd rather it remain anonymous. It was crunch time for basically every department. Lots of orders. Lots of money made but with a bunch of pressure to deliver on those orders. Tensions were a bit high. So we, HR, did a few things to raise morale and keep people happy. We had some lunches catered in, donut and coffee brought in for people. Just small things to bring the mood up. After a week or two of this kind of atmosphere in the office I get notified by one of the sales managers to hold a disciplinary meeting for one of sales guys who had been around for a few years. I knew this guy, call him Dave, but never really talked to him much. Seemed alright, not one of the ones I'd expect to be a troublemaker. What surprised me was that this meeting apparently also included one of the newer sales guys, Ben, out of college for maybe a year, and also not one of the ones I'd expect to cause trouble. Turns out Dave had been coping with the stress of the office by sneaking into empty conference rooms with his cell phone and enjoying some obscene videos IT said that since he did it on his own phone, they couldn't track it. Well Ben stumbles across him, which you'd think would just make an awkward moment and maybe a report to HR, but instead, maybe due to stress of his own, started loudly yelling at Dave to stop slacking off and started taking swings at him. This broke out into a fist fight in the room which drew a crowd and ultimately broke some of our video conferencing equipment. After a minute someone managed to get the two of them apart, which calmed things down for about 10 seconds before someone made a joke about Dave throwing punches with the same hand he had been touching himself with, which somehow provoked Ben to lunge at him again and take another swing before being restrained. The weirdest part, after the meeting and like a week of internal discussion, during which both sales guys kept working to keep orders rolling in, we had to make a decision. Our department head had carefully gone over the rules and relevant laws, assault charges and things, and determined that Ben be terminated for assaulting an employee, but Dave not be fired and instead required to attend gender-based harassment training to keep his job. As a result, a week later, we had to send an office-wide email informing people that referring to the incident in vulgar terms, off the record, my favorite was Dave, you beat that kid like you were beating your meat and there, was technically grounds for warning under our gender-based harassment policies. I worked closely with HR in a call center, you'll get some crazy stuff. Guy that carried a cooler every day was wiping crap on random walls and desks. It was his crap in his cooler. We thought it was his lunch. He got caught when he wiped it on the front desk directly in sight of the camera. Another guy had a colostomy bag that he refused to empty when it got full. You would find these trails of liquid poo randomly and we had to throw out 4 chairs that he ruined. He was fired quickly and tried to claim discrimination because he was a veteran. You'd also get a crazy amount of period stains on chairs. Look. 
It happens, but when it's the same few people, and we have free sanitary supplies in the bathroom, you know they just don't care. Had to delete someone from the system following them being murdered. Was a bad day. Over the years I've deleted 7 deaths including the murder, one diddler and one murderer. I had to do that for a work colleague that died in his sleep. I'd spoken to him less than 2 hours before he died. It's a weird feeling. I work at my family's business in the industrial sector, and HR is one of the hats I wear. 2018 was insanely busy for us, so we had to hire a staffing agency to get some general labor guys in. It's a simple wax on, wax off kind of job. The most memorable part of that hectic summer was one temp that the agency sent over for third shift, midnight 8am. We will call him Bobby for this story. Bobby shows up wearing nothing but a pair of cargo shorts, so we had to provide pants, shirt, and steel toes. Come break time at 4, he decided to go out to the parking lot and scale the building, about 30 feet, probably climbed a tree or something, had a smoke and managed to turn the security camera away from the parking lot. Bobby then walked away from the job and went home in the uniform and boots we provided for him. We assumed he wanted to break into some of the cars, but nothing was gone. Ended up costing probably $300 for training, uniform and just wasting our time. TL. DR. Temp employee scaled the 30 featuring building and played with the security cameras on his first day. That's temp workers for you, especially general labor. We've had more than one show up drunk and or high on their first week. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. for now.